Hello everyone, Brett back again, High Altitude Scale Modeling. Finally, another part to the B-17 build. I think... I lost my mouse. My mouse, my mouse. I think this is part six. But let me go over here, take a look. Don't want to give you any false information. Check my videos. Once my computer wakes up. Yes, this is part six. As you know, I've been doing a lot of photo etch. And I'm not done yet. Because, you know, I was working on the guns. Working on the guns. Working on the interior. The bomb bay, the cockpit. The rest of the fuselage. I've been lots of PE. You know, I had some family issues the last couple weeks so I haven't filmed anything. But one thing I did realize while I was doing this was I needed a break from the PE. So what I'm going to do, and what everyone should do if they start getting too overwhelmed in their build, is find something else to build. And for me, I'm going to work on one of the vehicles that goes with the kit. I'm going to work on the trailer. The tanker. So I'm put it together. Probably get it all together today. I'm not going to put the wheels on it, of course, because I have to primer and paint the body and weather that and then put the wheels on. So, let's find us some tanker parts, shall we? I set aside all the vehicle parts. Looks like a lot of D sprues. This is an A sprue. This is obviously a tanker sprue. It's an E sprue. This one. I don't see where, oh there it is. It's the D sprue. So, I'm going to put away some of the actual fuselage parts and cockpit parts and everything so I don't damage them. And let's get started. Let's see what the tools I need. All right. While we're here, a little quick um, scriber thing. This is a scriber from Japan that you can, or China. I'm not sure which you can get from UMP Retail. It may seem expensive, but the handle on it's really nice and padded. You get these carbide tip blades in different sizes. And, you know, I don't remember what the cost was. This is a Nutamia scriber. Skinny little metal handle. Carbide tip blades. This is one millimeter. But the handle costs $22 and the blades cost $29. Now, an overall feel for me, because i got big hands, this one what I got from UMPRetail.com is more comfortable. I could possibly see situations where this is needed, but at the cost, you know, this and the blade was over $50, not including shipping. And I bought it from an American company. Might have been more if I'd had it sent in from Japan, might have been less. But that's my little scriber thing since they're both sitting right there. Let's get started. So, we need D50 and 51, which are springs. These springs here. And I'm used to working on 24 scale cars, so these seem really small. And D13 twice, which is both of these axles. I don't mean axle rows or axle foley. See if any of you get that one. And D43. 
is right here. I hope you all have been modeling in my absence and not just sitting around mourning that I wasn't here. Because I wouldn't leave you guys or modeling. I didn't have any mojo issues. I had family issues. And we all know what those are like. There's a lot of detail on these, so right now I'm just lightly removing where they were connected without getting down deep into the plastic. Don't want to ruin any detail. Probably help if I zoomed in, huh? And you could see what I was doing. And you want to be careful that you don't break these delicate little parts while you're cleaning them up. So how you guys and gals been out there in the modeling world? What's going on? What's new? What you building? What you buying? Do you find sometimes that family life gets in the way? <clears throat> because family is very important. And taking care of family sometimes takes precedent. But it does not deter me from my hobby, which I greatly enjoy and I always will, and I have my whole life. At my hardware store, where I also have a hobby store, I've been having airbrush and basic modeling classes, which seem to be going well with the community. They're fun for me because I'm not an expert, so I can just share beginner knowledge and then point them in the direction of you guys with more skill than me. <clears throat> I had some very narrow sanders that Brian sent me, which I put away and I cannot find right now. Because I was complaining that as good as these are, they're too wide to get into some of these tight little spaces. So he sent me some that were just the right size. And I don't know where I put them. Ah, I might have too much stuff. Or not. Alright. So, according to directions. This part is going to be connected in between them. So take some extra thin and drop it in there. And it goes with the curved part facing down. And same on the other side. Glue in there. Too much glue. You want to make sure they're flat. Straight, and this is up like that. And then these there's um, 
like there's a round part right here and then there's not here and that's where these are going to sit in with this part to the outside so just like that <clears throat> I don't want to give this a minute to dry and go off or I'm going to be chasing parts everywhere so we're going to push those aside we're going to get the frame off of here which is E01 Start cleaning it up. When it goes time to attach this part I just did. <clears throat> There's been a lot of talk about air fix quality lately with the Sea Fury having some issues and the Phantom not being as perfect as they want it to be. And I don't get involved in those because we're modelers and we model. But with this kit, I haven't had any issues so far. Plastic's good. Detail's good. I think my biggest issue is myself going crazy with the photo edge. But I wanted to give a full-on build for my first video build. So, that's alright. These parts have to be done anyway. They'll just get done a little sooner than I was thinking. For those of you who are interested in one-to-one -one scale automobiles, I'm going to start doing some videos of my Challenger, because it's my other hobby. High altitude, fun in the Challenger my other hobby. That's what we're going to call it. I'm operating a muscle car at 10,000 feet. Which means it doesn't get very much air. Which means it won't go as fast as it would at lower elevations. But I also don't have a straight stretch of road more than a quarter mile long for 30 miles. So I couldn't get it up to speed very much anyway. <clears throat> Alright, now let's get some of these things on here. We're going to go just like that. And again, I'm going to take a little dollop of the extra thin, put it here just to give it some initial bite get everything lined up like it should be and I can drop a little bit more here and here and again I'm gonna let that take a minute to go off before I try and put the other one on <clears throat> next thing after I touch that it's going to be the wheels which I'm going to bypass that step because I got to paint the wheels separately then I'm going to put these parts on then we start building the actual tanker itself now the parts that need to be painted separately like the extinguishers the hose they'll be put on last well, I guess it depends whether the doors open or close with the hose section. Then the hoses and the rest of the rails. Then the tanker itself will be done. <clears throat> Alright. See how that one side's up? 
came out on level when I put this other part on. So we need to get this one on here. Get everything lined up the way it should be. And it's going to go right here in this part of the frame. So Make sure those parts I glued on aren't making it sit wonky. Everything's lined up and flat, just like that. Get a bit more glue. Let it pillar itself in there. over here and let it dry. D22, D39. Are the next parts. And 22, which is here. This is the part you would fold down if it wasn't sitting on the back of a truck. So remember, you don't have to stall yourself out and not do any building. Just go into either another part of the kit or another type of kit. I got a MiG-21 over there I'm behind on. And I've got my 69 Firebird that I want to do a little wheel demo on. So it's not finished yet. But it's almost finished. So, this part, sits in here, that's the part that actually hooks onto the truck, the fifth wheel part. And it doesn't want to go in there very well. Come to this from the bottom. Look there. Look there. Make sure it's level. <clears throat> I 
Now this sits here and the brace touches there. It sits there. A little bit of flash on the attachment point there. See, there's a front and a back to this. Nope. It leaves it up because you crank it down. Tweezers. Well, that didn't work. Dip a glue to get those on there. And another little glue in the track there. <clears throat> and it looks straight. See if we get this on here. This goes like this and sits right in there. And again, you want to make sure it's straight and level. Your wheels aren't going to sit straight and level. So. I didn't notice this part, but you can have the support wheels up or down. I think we'll go down. I want it hooked up to the truck. Okay. That part of the trailer's done, now we're going to work on some tanker parts. Cutting off the bottom, which is E08. And E04 which is one of the bulkheads.
it's beautifully right there. And we need D30. Which sits right there. Again, I'm going to glue it from the inside. And D24, which is the exact spot next to it. I keep sticking my glue thing into my MIG engine that I have sitting in front of the bottle, so I'm going to move my MIG engine out of the way. Because I keep sticking my glue brush in there thinking I'm getting some glue, and I'm not. Okay. Now we need 11 and E12. Okay, so this is the part of the hoses, and it sits right here, just like that. However, I'm not going to be able to paint it in there, so this is going to stay separate, because since it sits just in that little groove right there, that little notch, I can paint it separately and then add it even with the top on, because the top is next. 
You can see how the seams are. And I haven't sanded the edges of the bottom yet either. Careful removing these little nubs because there's some detail along there, which is why I'm not sanding it. And I've also got some little nubs on here, which also can't really be sanded. If you just lightly rub your, run your knife over it, don't put any pressure on it, you'll get it down just nicely. These back here can't be sanded because they're not having any detail. Now, see how well we can get the seam lines. Front. There's the back. Here, I don't get those very often. But apparently, when I do, there we go. Actually, still a little bit of nubs from the injector pins, which I'm going to have to sand away, but the fit's really nice. Front part is right here. Some gentle swipes with the sander. slide right there. And it's got a pretty nice seamless fit too. Door frame for the back. Door frame goes on for sure. Doors, I'm gonna have to think about. It's broke. Air fix. What have you done? But I don't know if it was broken in the bag or if I broke it just now. So we're not going to blame air fix for that. We're going to be careful not to break it anymore. It's 
slots into the grooves like that. And once you get in there, you won't be able to tell it's broke anyway. So the door frame, again, nice fit, a little loose on the top, and I'm not putting the doors on yet until I decide what to do with the doors. So then this can be put under here. There's four slots here, four grooves here. Side. It is just like that. So slots are here, 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 and then we want inside of here and inside of here. Oops. There we go. Wheels are level. Frame is on tank, front's on. So this can all be painted together. I like how it's got a little trailer hitch right there and some tow hooks. Have to drill those out. Anyway, so this can all be painted together, weathered together. These little wheels here have to be painted black. I have to decide on this part if we're going to slide it in there just like that. Of course it would be glued in so it would be bouncing around. But it sits in there just like that. So if we're going to leave the doors open, which probably will because there is some decent detail in this. Then you have to paint the hoses black. Make sure your seam lines are all taken care of. Well, maybe not. It's sitting in there like that, you're not going to be able to tell it has seam lines. So then we'll be using the open doors. So there you have it. The tanker is finished. No. It has a ladder, hoses, and a top rail. The ladder and the top rail can be put on. The hoses cannot because they're going to be painted black. So here's the hoses. Here's the ladder, but it would the ladder would be painted as part of the truck, so it can go on. Good thing I turned the page, huh? And the top rack, which is here.
Okay, this goes on here like this. Don't overdo the glue, or else you're going to run it on the side of the tank. There we go. See when he's cleaned up on the ladder, carefully. Okay, and the ladder, the hose in there. Oops. This part comes off the ladder according to the directions. Pay attention to that right here. This part doesn't get attached, it gets cut off, which is why the ladder wasn't fitting. Now the ladder just sits just like that. Okay, hoses will go on last, the after, as well as the extinguishers and the hose. And they're going to ride right underneath here, right underneath here. So, yep, won't be a problem at all because they're going to go right under the ladder. So, there you go. Now we're truly done with what we can do so far. Next is the Chevy bomb truck or the truck that drives the tanker. But I'm going to get back to the actual plane next time. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed part six. And part seven will be coming along next week. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend.